Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel MacTutes. In this video, we will discuss the terminology for radial cam. Radial camps are camps in which the motion of the follower is in the direction perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the cam as shown here. This is a disc cam and roller follow arrangement. These are the disc cam and roller follower mechanism in different views. These figures show the position of the follower in various extreme positions of the cam. This is the topmost position of the follower and this is the bottommost position of the follower. So this distance is nothing but the stroke of the follower. In this picture, you can see how the follower is moving in the upward direction with the rotation of the cam. So you can see as the cam is rotating, so according to the profile of the cam, the follower is moving upwards. This is known as the rise of the follower. This picture depicts the downward motion of the follower or the fall of the follower with the rotation of the cam depending on its profile. And you can see in this picture the follower is not moving with the rotation of the cam. So this is known as dwell of the follower. There is no displacement of the follower with the cam rotation. Similarly, in this figure also, the follower is not seen to be moving with the rotation of the cam. So this is also the dwell of the follower. The actual shape of a cam can be designed once the desired motion of the follower is defined. The shape of the cam depends on the size of the cam along with the configuration of the follower. Prior to designing the profile of a disc cam, some geometric features must be defined. So let's discuss these terms one by one. So the first term that we are going to define is base circle. Base circle is the smallest circle that can be drawn with the center at the center of the cam and tangential to the cam profile as we can see here. As we see that the base circle really defines the size of the cam. It is the difference of the distance of the cam surface from the cam center and this radius of the base circle that defines the movement of the follower. So this distance is defining the movement of the follower. This will be the displacement at this position. So when the roller is in contact with the base circle, that is from here to here, the follower is at the lowest position. The size of the base circle is typically dictated by the spatial restrictions of the applications. In general, a large base circle causes fewer problems with force transmission. However, a large base circle and hence a large cam is contradictory for the common design goal of smaller products. Now the next term is a trace point. If we want to describe the motion of the follower for a translating follower or for an oscillating follower, we need to know a point about which the motion of the follower will be described. So the point about which we are going to describe the motion of the follower is trace point. Precisely speaking, it is a theoretical point on the follower, the movement of which describes the follower movement. It is also defined as the point which traces the cam profile or which traces the pitch curve as shown here. So this is generating the pitch curve. The trace point is generating the pitch curve. We will define the term pitch curve later on. So in the roller follower, it is the center of the roller. That means the movement of the follower will be described in terms of this roller center. For the roller follower, the trace point will be same for all the positions of the follower as the motion is translational as seen here. For oscillating follower, it is also the center of the roller but we will be concentrating on the circular arc along which the roller center will be moving as shown here. The trace point will be moving along the circular path of the oscillating follower. In case of knife edge follower, 
It is the point of contact of the cam and the follower. So the tip of the follower is the trace point in the case of knife edge follower as shown here. Now if it is a flat face follower then you can see that the trace point is changing with the rotation of the cam. At this location it is here. Now it will be shifting from here to here. As the cam is moving in this direction so it is shifting towards this direction. But at this location you can see this point is closest to the center of the cam or axis of the cam. So in the flat face follower the trace point which we are going to use is the point on the follower face which is in contact with the cam surface when the follower is at one of the extreme positions in which the follower is closest to the camshaft axis. We will see it once again. In this case, this is the point where the follower surface is closest to the camshaft axis. This is the point. So we will consider this point as the trace point for the flat face follower. The point on the surface of the flat face follower which is closest to the axis of the rotation of the cam. So this is all about the trace point. Next important point which we are going to discuss is pitch curve. To define a pitch curve, we think of a kinematic inversion. This is a four link mechanism. In this four link mechanism, it is the link one that is fixed. This is fixed and here the support is fixed. The link two is the cam, link three is the roller and the link four is this follower. Now, if in this mechanism, we make an inversion in which the link two, that is the cam, is fixed. That is, if we allow the prismatic pair of the guide and the follower to move in the opposite direction, having the link two, that is the cam, as fixed. So in this case, roller along with the follower will be rotating about the fixed cam. And if we do that, then the locus of center of the roller will generate a curve which is parallel to the cam profile and it is known as pitch curve as shown here. So the pitch curve is the locus of the trace point that is the center of the roller in this case after kinematic inversion with cam fixed. More precisely, the pitch curve is drawn by the trace point assuming the cam is fixed and the trace point of the roller rotates about the cam. So this is the pitch curve for the disc cam shown in this configuration with roller follower. So in case of roller follower, the pitch curve is at a distance which is equal to the radius of the roller from the cam profile. This can be seen as follows. So this is how the pitch curve is generated. We shall see it once again. It is the locus of the center of the roller in this case or the locus of the trace point. So the pitch curve in case of roller follower is at a distance from the cam profile and the distance is equal to the radius of the roller. In case of knife edge follower, the pitch curve is coincident with the profile of the cam as the trace point is the direct point of contact of the tip of the knife edge follower and the cam. So the pitch curve will be same as the cam profile as shown here. Having defined the pitch curve, let us now define a very important term that is pressure angle. Suppose the follower has moved to this position when the cam is fixed. If we look at this diagram, we see that the common normal between the roller and the cam will be passing through the roller center and normal to the cam profile. As we see, this is the common normal between the roller and the cam profile. Now, if we assume that there is no friction, then the force that is exerted by the cam onto the roller will be acting along this common normal. So this is the direction of the force between the cam and the roller in the absence of the friction. Let us understand this with another figure. So this is the point of contact of the cam and the roller and this is the direction of the common normal 
at the point of contact of the roller and the cam. And this is the direction of motion of the follower, which is vertical direction. So we see here that the normal contact force will be acting in this direction. But the roller has to move in the vertical direction as it is constrained by this support. But the follower is being pushed along the direction of the common normal. So this angle should not be too large because a force is always transmitted perpendicular to the surfaces in contact. The cam does not always push the follower in the direction of its motion. The curvature of the cam affects the position between the follower center line and the actual point of contact as we see here in the figure. The force required to push the follower depends on the application of the cam system. However, the contact force between the cam and the follower can be much greater depending on the location of the contact point. Actually, only one component of the contact force generates the follower motion. This force will be having two components, one in the vertical direction and another in the horizontal direction. So only the vertical direction will be used for providing the motion to the follower. The other force component is undesirable and it generates a side load and must be absorbed by the follower guide bearings. So this angle, that is the pressure angle, correlates these two components of the contact force. The pressure angle at any point of the profile of a cam is the angle between the follower movement and the direction that the cam is pushing it. More precisely, it is the angle between the path of the follower motion and the line perpendicular to the cam profile at the point of follower contact. Each point on the cam surface has a pressure angle and it varies in magnitude at all instances of the follower motion. A high value of maximum pressure angle is not desired as it might jam the follower in the bearings. So let's come back to our main figure. So this angle between the direction of the common normal that is the direction of the normal contact force and the direction of the follower movement is what we call the pressure angle phi. And for the smooth movement of this follower, this angle should be less than the allowable value. Pressure angle will keep on changing depending on the cam profile and for the roller follower that is translating follower, the maximum allowable pressure angle should be less than 30 degree and for oscillating follower, this value should be less than 45 degrees. So I hope pressure angle is understood. Next we see pitch point. So as we discussed that each point on the cam surface has a pressure angle and its magnitude at all the instances of the follower motion will be changing. So there will be a point at which this pressure angle is maximum as shown here. In this configuration, this is the point at which the pressure angle is maximum. So this point at which the pressure angle is maximum is known as pitch point. Next we have pitch circle. Pitch circle is a circle that is passing through the pitch point and concentric with the base circle. And the center of this pitch circle will be the center of the cam. Next term which we shall discuss is prime circle. As the base circle is to cam profile, similarly a smallest circle that can be drawn with the cam center as its center and tangential to the pitch curve is known as a prime circle as shown here. This blue color dotted circle is tangent to the pitch curve and center of this circle is cam center. So we see that the prime circle to the pitch curve is same as the base circle to the cam profile. Also here we see that the radius of the prime circle is equal to the sum of the radius of the base circle and radius of roller. One thing to note in case of prime circle, the prime circle actually describes the lowest position of the follower. Below this, the roller follower cannot move. So this defines the lowest position of the follower. So summing up all these terms, we once again recapitulate on what we have discussed up till now. This is the base circle which dictates the size of the cam, the trace point which traces the 
motion of the follower or the pitch curve. This is the pitch curve which is parallel to the cam profile, the pressure angle which is very important term. It should be less than a particular allowable value. The pitch point at which the pressure angle is maximum. The pitch circle which is concentric to the base circle and passing through the pitch point and the prime circle which is tangent to the pitch curve and the center as center of the cam. So these are the terms that are used to define the radial cam and follower mechanism. So I hope you have understood the terminology for radial cam and follower mechanism. If you have learned something from this video, do like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel Matthews and press the bell icon. Thank you.